Hello everyone, this is Colton and welcome back to Spiritual Essence. In this video today, we are going to be talking to you about altars and rituals. Yes, we're digging in a little deeper, a little bit more complexity, but not too much. Uh, a lot of uh, newcomers, or acolytes as we call them, might think, geez, this all sounds complicated. Well, everything when it first starts out sounds complicated. This isn't really at all difficult. So first, first before we begin anything, why do we use altars? What are they for? An altar is a place, a sanctuary basically, uh, for you to practice your spiritual path in any way you want without judgment. It's a judgment-free zone. It's a place where not all eyes are on you, there are no distractions, it's just you and whatever you're trying to practice. Uh, altars are actually represented in pretty much all spiritual paths. Uh, even Christianity has altars, witchcraft has altars, Wicca has altars, uh, Buddhism has altars, they all have altars. Basically a place for you to get in touch with your spiritual side. Uh, a lot of people use them to pray, to cast spells, uh, to have meetings or connections with higher powers and deities. An altar can be a place where you set up yourself to become stronger. Spiritually, mentally, what have you. Now, uh, an altar can is usually in one place, but it doesn't have to be. Like where I live, uh, I'm not in the exact household to where I can just leave uh, an altar around without it getting in someone's way. So I interchange my altar. I use different areas. Uh, preferably though, it's, it's usually stationary. Uh, and the more you use that certain spot, the more energy uh, that it collects it then becomes a place of power. It's your responsibility, though, to decide whether it is a positive energy or a negative energy. So you must be careful with that. <clears throat> Choose your place wisely. Uh, things that can be placed on the altars are crystals, if you work with crystals, any kind of crystals, statues of deities or symbols of them, uh, herbs, uh, to burn, oils for anointing, jewelry or miscellaneous objects that you wish to enchant or empower or bless. Uh, so those are just a few examples, but basically uh, it is your altar. Therefore, you can freestyle it however, you can change it up whenever, you can put whatever you feel is necessary on the altar. That That's up to you. Before we get into rituals, I must say... The more you research about what you're trying to do, the better. So don't just go in and freestyle it uh, when it's your first time. Once you start to get to know things a little, you can improvise, but you at least have to know the basics. At least uh, get a hold of some book that can perhaps help you or perhaps even a mentor that's someone who can teach you who has experience that you trust. So the more information that you can get down, the better. Um, different examples of situations of uh, what people would do at their altar. These are just a few. Practically, there are many reasons to use an altar. Uh, number one is devotions. Devotions are giving thanks to a deity or spirit, asking for guidance uh, a blessing or a wish to come true, uh, giving thanks to the deities and giving offerings in exchange for the blessings they've already given you, for the protection, for uh, what's going on, if your life is going good, you know, you give thanks. Uh, and uh, if you uh, want, if there's anything you need, you know, you can ask them. Therefore, you are um, providing a devotion to that uh, certain deity or deities. It can be more than one or spirit. Uh, manifesting and conjuring. 
uh, these can involve deities or just your own power because sometimes you must trust in your own power. You don't necessarily need deities if you don't really pray to any or don't believe in any. Um, you're basically, you can use herbs, you can oils, uh, crystals. This is where it becomes uh, more diverse. Um, usually for devotions, it, it's simplistic. Devotions can have like incense or a food offering, an oil here and there. That's fine. Uh, but crystals can also be used because of the energy they give off candles. Candles are a main thing uh, in altars and devotions. Um, as well as your own intent to make uh, what you desire into reality. Casting spells, uh, trying to bring what you desire in your mind into the real world. So that's another... Uh, one, the third and final example I'm going to give you is meditation. Those who meditate at their altars could be trying to focus their own energy and strengthen it, or maybe get a more direct connection to maybe an ancestor or a deity that they're trying to contact uh, to build themselves up. Uh, meditation is good for the soul. It's really helpful. Once you learn to get into a daily routine of it, it really does become more calming. It really separates you from like the harsh outside world that's going on around you. Uh, but a lot of people med just choose to meditate at their altars, and that's fine. It's a place of power. It's the best place probably at all to use meditation to strengthen yourself. It is your sanctuary. It's filled with your energy. It's filled with powerful uh, spiritual energies to strengthen your spiritual defenses. It's excellent. Okay, um, now that I've gotten all the information out of the way, I'm actually going to show you a visual demonstration of how um, one would uh, set up an altar, how to do it, what do I usually do, and... Um, give you a step-by-step -step instruction of what all goes on. All right, so first you're going to want to find out where you want your altar. Now, as I said, my altar, I actually switch up every now and then. I don't really have a permanent place to put my altar. So oftentimes I use this dining room table. It's perfectly fine. Uh, before you do anything, you're going to want to make sure it's cleaned off in two ways. So you're going to want to make sure that you put some kind of surface cleaner. Uh, and this is just, you know, because if there are germs on it, you don't want it touching all your, your spiritual stuff. You want to make sure that that's clean. So you wipe it off, which I've already done. Now, the second way is spiritually. So uh, within the spray bottle is actually uh, salt and purified water. And salt is actually a very great purified substance. So I'm going to spray it all around. Make sure that it gets nice and doused. Now, um, because this is wood, I'm going to want to make sure that this is all cleaned up really nice. Some people actually choose to do oil on wooden surfaces like this, like little tables and stuff. Um, I don't really have anointing oil, actually. I haven't really ever used it. I've always used the, the salt water thing. So, either that, or you can also use an herb. Um, if you're going to do an herb, I prefer white sage. White sage is good, just make sure that the smoke touches all around. I would actually do it three times around. It's a very lucky number, very magic number. Um, and just make sure that while you are cleaning, you you swipe counterclockwise. And what that does is it actually removes anything that the table may have picked up that might be in a negative way. And you're going to imagine anything dark from the table or the altar just blowing away as you're cleaning it. Uh, 
Okay. Yep, that feels all dry. Make sure you really wipe it down. You don't want moisture eating away at your altar if it's a wooden surface. All right, so now that you have cleaned off your altar in both ways, now we are ready to set up what we want. Now remember, before we, we go diving into anything, make sure you know exactly what you need, what do you want to do, what deities do you want to call upon? What are they associated with? What is their uh, associated color, herb, um, crystal? Get as much as you can. Now, if you don't really have all that, just stick with what you have. Um, simplicity can be associated with an altar. It doesn't mean that the gods are not going to seek you out. It doesn't mean they're not going to answer your prayers. It does not mean that your spells are not going to work. Uh, stick with what you have. Um, if you want to wait because you don't have the stuff, fine. That's, that's your call because this is your sanctuary and you're only as powerful as you feel. So I am going to make this a, a devotion altar. All right now, so I, I have my altar set up and I'm going to show you exactly everything I have and why. All right, so this is a statue of Danu. She's a Celtic goddess. She's actually uh, the biggest statue in my collection. Uh, she is the goddess of the earth and rivers. Also, the Celtic people and the fairy folk, the Tuatha de Danann. Um, so I, of course, have a statue of her, and she's holding a cauldron um, with a symbol, the Triskelion. I believe it's uh, actually a symbol of... Uh, birth, life, death. So basically, it keeps going in a circle. And then of course there's there's a snake, a lotus pod, a couple of them actually, which is actually a symbol of female femininity. Um, there's a fish right behind her. Uh, she's got all kinds of fancy jewelry and she actually has a cloak. Uh, very pristine looking. So uh, I have chosen her Actually, I believe she's chosen me uh, as a mother goddess. Uh, and because she is a goddess of the fairy folk, I actually have, if you see, uh, quite a few fairy statues, if you see right there. These uh, fairy statues were very expensive, so if you were to choose her, I would be uh, very doubtful that many of you would actually want to spend the money for it, which is fine. That's fine. Uh, no big deal. Just do with what you have. And because she's a symbol of the earth, I actually have a rose inside a uh, resin. So it's a symbol of eternity. I have actually beautiful blue rose. So very, very nice. Basically symbols of plants. Uh, something she presides over. Uh, this hand statue I actually put because uh, she's actually a very uh, ancient and powerful deity. She's the oldest in the of the Celtic deities. Very powerful. There's very few legends about her, which only adds to her mysticism and mystery. So I thought that this would be a perfect thing to add on the altar. I have quite a few an animal symbols, too. Um... So, of course, there's a frog, a uh, magnifying glass, yes, but a symbol of a frog nonetheless. So, and an amphibian, and because she's a goddess of rivers, and where do frogs hang out usually? So, I also have deer antlers. These are real. Uh, I got these actually at a thrift store, so no, I did not go hunting. I don't really think I could pull myself to do it. Um... I only put one candle on here just to show you guys, and it's actually, I have two of these pentagram candle holders, uh, and this is a white candle that I've already used. Preferably when you set up candles on an altar and you want a clean slate, uh, make sure you know which candles you used for what, that way you know you're getting the proper energies. So if you were to ask Danu for, 
I don't know, prosperity at work or something to get more money, you wouldn't have used candles that you used for a hex or a binding spell because then it, it probably wouldn't be as effective. Uh, people use candles to strengthen their own magic as well as uh, provide offerings to deities that they are trying to pray to. Um, I have a few crystals here. This I got from my sister many years ago. It's a harmonizer. It's got many different crystals. Uh, it's actually uh, for harmonizing an area, neutralizing negative energies, and keeping positive energies in flow constantly. And um, one of the most basic crystals you can use on an altar if you don't really have a firm knowledge of crystals is quartz. Clear or cloudy, doesn't matter. Um, you can even charge this with your energy like I've showed you guys. If you guys haven't uh, learned how to do that, I would go back to the first episode on this channel and, uh, well, pay attention. So, got that. And I have one more. I have an amethyst crystal. Very good for uh, neutralizing negative energies and improving a spirituality. So, that is definitely something I want. As for herbs, I actually have a bag of bay leaves. Uh, people write things on these and burn them to send it up to the gods. I have used quite a few of this, uh, these bay leaves and that technique in many spells, and it's oftentimes worked. So um, if you're going to go with any herb, you can get these at the grocery store, bay leaves. Uh, you can write uh, things down on them. Try with a uh, Sharpie because pen doesn't always work on this kind of uh, texture of leaf. So Sharpies work better. Make sure that you provide as much detail as possible. And uh, I'm actually going to bring one out to show you guys. <clears throat> so say you already written something on this. Like um, there's a guy or girl who noticed you, but she's too shy to say anything, but you know the signs are there and you like him or her back. Just write on uh, the bay leaf that I want them to gain confidence or for myself to gain confidence uh, to show my feelings. And uh, maybe write some symbols on the back or something if you know of a few. Hold it in your hand. Visualize exactly what the outcome you want this to do. And then burn it. Make sure it burns all the way. And send it up to the gods. Um... If you don't want to burn these exactly right away, um, you can place them on the altar like so. You can place them all around, uh, especially because she's a goddess of nature. She's a mother nature goddess, goddess of the earth. So um, having leaves and things of nature around the altar would probably be very pleasing for her. Um, I have sage in an abalone shell. Um, sage is a very good purifying agent. Uh, it, white sage neutralizes negative energies and casts negative and evil spirits away. So, I would use the sage first to, uh, cleanse the area, because you don't, you do not want to invite evil spirits accidentally or purposely. Uh, I have one seashell here. She is a goddess technically of rivers, but she's also a goddess of earth. So if we can represent the oceans or the rivers that used to be oceans, then uh, you might as well, you know, go the extra mile. And then, of course, I have a sensor. Um, for those of you who do not know what this is, it actually holds incense, cone incense. Uh, it's got symbols of stars on it. Um, I often use charged incense within this. Um, if you can see, yeah, it's actually gotten uh, its fair share of burning. Um, it actually smells pretty good, too. So that's what it looks like. And you would put the cone incense on the uh, middle. You close it and just let the smoke rise as another offering to your chosen deity, which is, in this case, uh, Danu for me. So basically, you don't have to have all of this stuff, but if you have a few things that are associated with her, things I'm sure you can find at the dollar store, things that you can find maybe around your house or maybe a relative's house that you can borrow, so be it. Just I would be sure that you know where it came from and what energies it holds. Otherwise, cleanse the hell out of it. 
So, um, this is basically how one would set up a devotion altar. Uh, the rest of the altars can be similar. Um, if you don't wish to choose a deity, then that's fine. If you trust your own uh, magical energy or maybe a spirit of some sort to guide you, that's fine. Uh, you can still have all kinds of these things. Incense, herbs, um... Incense uh, can be very useful in spells uh, and manifestations. Herbs as well, especially bay leaves and sage. Crystals can also be very good use. Uh, if you do not choose a deity, then you don't necessarily have to have uh, the symbols of nature. You don't have to have the god statues. Uh, or symbols of them. But candles are another must. My recommendation would at least be three candles or more. Uh, because three is a magic number. Three is a very powerful number. In Wiccan belief, it's actually represented by the trifold rule. Anything that you send out to the universe will come back to you times three, positive or negative. Um, not everyone believes that, and that's fine, but three, nevertheless, is still a very magic and powerful number. So if you were to say a spell or incantation, it's best to do it three times. So, as I said before, it doesn't have to be this complex. In fact, if it was a real ritual, I would probably add a lot more. Um, but it's really your call. Sometimes the simplest way is best. It doesn't have to be that way, but it's really on like your availability, what you have on hand, when you want to do things, and what you're doing them for. It really all matters on that. So um, just feel free to do what feels right to you. If something doesn't feel right and you're new to spirituality, um, don't do it. Research as much as you, as you can. And, see, when I did my first ritual, I was basically freestyling it. I researched all I could, but, um, I was kind of nervous. But, uh, it worked out all in the end, and I'm like, well, maybe I do have a handle on this. And the more I researched, the more videos I watched, the more books and websites I visited, and the more I talked to people, and the more I experimented, the more I learned about this stuff. So, um, be careful. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. I am here for you guys, um, always. Uh, usually when I, uh, am asked a question in the comments, I will get back to you. So, other than that, uh... Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and also the bell button so that you don't miss any new videos that come in. All right. Thank you guys for watching Spiritual Essence. Have a good day and happy spellcasting.